Welcome to Noonday Prayers at, uh, at St. George's. Um, you'll find the little service in the Book of Common Prayer, page 138, if you have a prayer book and that's what you're worshipping with. And we'll have a moment of silence and then we'll look a little bit at Psalm 130. Give praise, you servants of the Lord, praise the name of the Lord. Let the name of the Lord be blessed from this time forth forevermore. From the rising of the sun to its going down, let the name of the Lord be praised. The Lord is high above all nations and his glory above the heavens. O God, you will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are fixed on you. For in returning and rest we shall be saved in quietness and trust, shall be our strength. I'm going to read today's Gospel, which is from Luke chapter 10, and we'll then talk about it for a little bit. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them on ahead of him, two by two, into every town and place where he himself was about to go. And he said to them, The harvest is plentiful and the laborers are few. Therefore pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go your way. Behold, I am sending you out as lambs in the midst of wolves. Carry no money bag, no knapsack, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say peace to this house. And if a son of peace is there, your peace will rest upon him. And if not, it will return to you. And remain in the same house, eating and drinking what they provide. For the laborer deserves his wages. Do not go from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and they receive you, eat what is set before you. Heal the sick in it and say to them, The kingdom of God has come near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not receive you, go into the streets and say, Even the dust of your town that clings to your feet we wipe off against you. Nevertheless, know this, that the kingdom of God has come near. I tell you, it will be more bearable in that day for Sodom than for that town. I guess I got to know this passage when I was a kid growing up. I, I've said it a number of times at St. George's. I don't know that I've said it uh, on the noonday prayers yet, so I'll say it now. I didn't grow up in a home where the Christian faith was taken particularly seriously. Uh, in England, we were Church of England, and Church of England was basically the church we stayed away from. And uh, if you went into hospital in England and you said you had no religion, they just put down Church of England. And uh, we weren't quite as far back as that, but not far from it. And it was as a middle school boy that I became involved in a, a movement for boys called Crusaders. And that's where I came to know Jesus Christ. And we used to sing a, a chorus on a regular basis, uh, which was based upon the words of Jesus there. Here, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. I won't sing it for you. Um, I, I suspect it would do some problems all sorts of places. But it was, it was a beautiful little passage. Um, Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. We tend to think of harvest these days, particularly uh, harvest where we're harvesting wheat or barley or oats or something like that as being a large field with a large combine harvester or several combine harvesters which will uh, cover several hundred acres in a day. But in the first century, 
the whole community got involved in the work of harvesting. The men would do the uh, the cutting of the wheat or whatever it was. The women would gather the, uh, the, the, the wheat up and make them into sheaves and uh, then the men probably would then be threshing the sheaves uh, to get the grain from the straw. And it was a, a, an event where the children would be involved too and uh, it would be a celebratory event and the whole community would be out there bringing in the harvest. And I always suspect that Jesus uh, said this to his disciples in May, June, round harvest time. The fields were white unto harvest and he was looking at it and saying, isn't the world like that? God has called Israel to be his holy people in this world. God has called me to be the savior of the world. Now let's take that message out and share it with everybody. And these 72 who he sent out were just the first of many, many, many who would be sent out down through the centuries to take the gospel of Jesus Christ. And let's pray for those whose task it is to share the good news of Jesus Christ, particularly in those places where it's very dark and very difficult. We're going to pray now for various people at St. George's. There may be people that you would like to pray at this time, pray for at this time, people you know, people if you're not from St. George's in your own church and congregations. Or people who come to your mind as we mention these names. We pray for Patrick and Pip, Sophie, Abigail, Caroline, Chris, Susan, Lauren, Virginia, Stephanie, Richard, Kristen, Andy, Kathleen, Francis, Jerry, and Elizabeth. We lift each of these to you and each of those whose names have been on our own minds as we've been praying. We lift them to you that your hand will bless them and enrich them in every way this day. Sunday is the Sunday closest to St. Francis of Assisi Day and we will be blessing our pets and animals here on Sunday afternoon. So let's pray for our stewardship of creation, of the natural world, and let us pray that God will make us sensitive to the needs of the world as climate changes and as uh, we experience the challenges what that presents. O merciful Creator, your hand is open wide to satisfy the need of every living creature. Make us always thankful for your loving providence and grant that we, remembering the account that we must one day give, may be faithful stewards of your good gifts to us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. And if you have a cat or a dog or another uh, pet, you might want now to just pray for them. Thank God for them. Now, as our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. 
Blessed Saviour, at this hour you hung upon the cross, stretching out your loving arms. Grant that all the peoples of the earth may look to you and be saved for your mercy's sake. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst us and remain with us always.